A... Aké je tam jedno heslo? Ja, tu máš, ne, neviem, to spomeňte, tu máš. Počkaj si. Kdybyš už spamätil, ja sa to mal, to nepripojím. Nie, nie, tu máš. Jo. Ale ktorý môžete dať za otázky? Za otázky máme my vlastné trička. Ale tak dáme aj šály kľudne. Jo, som... takhle, tak tohle je přímo reflexie. Dobre. Každý, každý prezentuje na trička, môže dať za Super. A toto je voda pre nás? Ja neviem. Nie. A nemáš nejakú vodu? Daj mi prosím ťa, ja som jednu nám daj. We will do it. We can do it together. I can handle it. Okay. Uh, Michal, can you go then to the winter of code page? Oh. One step at a time. Okay. We're going to go from the third place to second place. First place. And are these in the crowd? We will have questions. No, jasně. To my tu asi tak dlouho nebudeme. Nebo jestli chcete nakonec, to si řekněte sami. Nejpohodě. To máš mysl. Tady je mikrofon. Pokud se budete pohybovat v nějaké rozumné vzdálenosti, tak to chytne. Jo. Ve větší vzdálenosti už ne. A nemáte ještě taky ten externí? Ne, ne. Vůbec ten to je? Jenom tento. A pokud se bude někdo ptát, tak to prosím zopakujte tady někde prostě poblíž. A to vlastně je malé, takže to je v pohodě. Jo, jo. Když je ten člověk, vím, vím, že jste šeli. OK, dobře. Jo, že když se někdo zeptá, tak prostě to zopakujte, ono to chytne, že je tady poblíž. My se uvidíme sami, to je musíš rozhodnout. Ne, úplně v pohodě. Má si len fitness. Co pro vás môžem udelať, nebo už to máte? A dajte tým vytrovkou na začiatku, tak rýchlo spomenieme. To bude rýchlovka. Netreba, netreba. A nejako ukazovalo to? Ne, to je v pohode. Aká je to stránka? Vytrovkou. Takto? To poznáme, hej. My, my to asi stihneme ešte skorej. My potom máme asi takých 15 minút ešte na asfér. Takže iba my potom na nás zastavte, že už je koniec. Mám tady byť taký veľký, že môžem byť? Máme tu výhľad. Ja som to dal. 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 Ja som to Chceš ešte nič? Máš adaptér? Máš adaptér? Mám? To je. Funguje ti to? Funguje ti to? Nie, to mi nefunguje vôbec. Takže... Funguje ti to? 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 A pripojil si... Alebo funguje ti to? Nefunguje ti to? Nefunguje ti to? Nefunguje ti to? A dal si tam dobré heslo? Áno. Lebo ja som na tom furt... Marek má kábel. Môžem kábel? 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 Ale tak to máš niečo s Chromom, že? Také turt, kamo, bežím tam Chrom od rána úplne, všetky tema som tam zároveň. Aha, ja som tam. Aha, mi tu ide. Máš Lightning voľnej? Lightning. Ja ho by... Better. Kto je základný 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 základný
Hands up. Hands up. You're okay. Uh, Out. No, not in the competition. How many of you have deployed applications on OpenShift? Disable Wi-Fi first. Yeah. There's 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 Wi-Fi. Those are our people. Yes. Those are our people. You will get this probably. So, uh, before we start our presentation that we have with Michal, I want to just announce, this is Michal, uh, I just want to quick announce the winners of this year, Winter of Code. Uh, so, again, we have uh, first three prizes and the uh, enterprise prize. <laughs> Can you slide down? A little bit? Yeah. A bit. 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 There you go. Oh, this is up. Yes. No, down, down. Come on. Up. You want to do these guys first? Yes. Okay. This is the main challenge where we actually get something like this fancy tablet. So for the next year, don't forget, the winter is coming or will be coming. The winter is always here in Czech Republic. <laughs> yeah. And so we start for the third prize. Third prize is, it goes to Red Hatter called Tomáš Tomeček. And for, uh, for a terminal user interface for Docker Engine, which we, uh, with which you can basically monitor your Docker containers and uh, manage your images and containers as well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you want, there is the link. It's a pretty neat thing. We tested it with Michal. And yeah. So let's go on. The second prize goes to France, to Vincent uh, Behar, and for a dashboard, basically. In, not an, it's not an Adam, but it's a separate dashboard for our uh, OpenShift uh, like platform, which is not our, but his. And it's pretty neat, and we decided to put him the second prize. So we'll, he will get a T-shirt and a tablet as well. And the first prize goes to Japan, to Kenjiro Nakayam. Yeah, yeah. that's how you say it. <laughs> yeah, for a Kubernetes manifest uh, scanner, and yeah. It's uh, Michal played with it. He said it's, it's great. I cannot complain with Michal. What it allows you to do is that you can explore the API on a command line, so you can list different uh, different fields for different resources. So it helps you understand how the Kubernetes and OpenShift works, basically. It's a very neat interface. It's like working like a manual page or something like that. Yeah, we have all of resources in OpenShift and Kubernetes, so it's good to know what they do. Uh, so the first prize goes to Japan, and the uh, enterprise uh, prize goes again a sec as a second year to Spain to our uh, enterprise customer uh, from Madrid called Produban, and they created uh, basically two two submissions. One is a template uh, which, uh, which is associated with images, mm -hmm. and second one is a rail-based image for running uh, Java application from Open G G uh, which contains Open JDK. So Protoban is the IT shop behind the Banco Santana. So they're playing with your money and keeping it safe and using a lot of OpenShift. So um, we're really pleased to have them as part of the community. And um, we're going to send them some prizes yeah. in, in directly through their sales guys. Yeah. So. We arranged them to put to all of their uh, developers one t-shirt, so ah. it's fair. T-shirts are easy. T-shirts are good. Yeah. So. And that's it for the winter of code. And we have another announcement from marketing that in March there will be a worldwide hackathon happening, which will be focused on uh, health application, fitness applications. It's about to be announced the correct, uh, the correct date, but we don't know it yet. We just listen to our box, tweets, whatever. And the uh, winning pool is $100,000. Uh, so don't forget about it. This will be even more fun. Yeah. So perfect. All right. Did any of you in the audience participate in uh, submit to the OpenShift Winter of Code contest? Any hands? Anyone from the audience? You? Yeah? No, I want a t-shirt. All right, so sure. next year the challenge is on and for the hackathon to, to get there, get in your, uh, your applications early so that we can vet them, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully you'll put them on GitHub as open source code too if you can. Yeah, everything has to be open source. All right. Everything has to be on GitHub. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Back so, to you. back to...
behind the open. Thank suit. you guys. So yeah, so this was the winter of cold, and now this is the main presentation. So this presentation will not be about uh, about the project uh, about coding. It will not. I don't want to be super technical. What I found really interesting is how OpenShift engineering works. Like how we, as engineers, daily day the, the, on daily basis, how we work, what tools we use, you know, how we are structured, how how we manage to build a product from nothing uh, to OpenShift V3 in like one half year, basically, right? So for me, that's very interesting, and I just want to you know share with you like how we work and on what we use. So before I start going to tools and you know different kind of stuff, uh, also the other half of this presentation I want to use for the questions. So I was really I would really love to have a discussion about like how you want to use OpenShift, what you want to do on OpenShift, like what's your use cases, what's your pain points. You know, we can we can just make it interactive, so you can just ask us questions about OpenShift V3 or Kubernetes or whatever in, will you find interesting. You know, we are engineers, so we can probably answer those questions. Maybe we don't answer them marketing way or you know the sale way but we are trying to get your answer at least from the technical point of view and all good answer uh, questions will receive a t-shirt <laughs> so okay so let's start so so before I go to the presentation I just want to show you the history of OpenShift project right so which also predates uh, me and the OpenShift project itself in Red Hat so I joined Red Hat in 2010 so so the open first and we first announced OpenShift online in 2011 uh, that was basically done after we bought the company called Makara. So we, so Red Hat told like uh, there is a space on the market for having something like a platform as a service. Uh, that space was basically because of the Jables. So people want to run Jables applications more effectively. They want to run it in cloud. You know all these cloud buzzwords and that at that time come up. So that was the date when we announced OpenShift Online. Then in, in one year, we start with OpenShift Enterprise V1. So that was the first original version like in, in OpenShift. Uh, it was based on a custom containerization that used Selenux, uh, kernel namespaces, it used C groups and other stuff. So it was pretty much like a Docker. It was not that fancy as Docker, right? Like it, it was not like Docker run, Docker create and Docker pool. Basically we have the containerization technology already there, but it was not Docker, right? And also the Ruby at that time, uh, the, the the project was written in Ruby. It has what the hell? Come on. So it has something like uh, uh, nineteen uh, thousand lines of code, uh, which was a pretty small project, but it basically it was very very basic. So then we thought like with OpenShift uh, V2, uh, Enterprise V2, we, we based it on V1, but we listened to all the customers and, and users who wants to also run uh, the applications like uh, Node.js, Python, PHP, and so on. So, and they also want to have something that they can uh, add, the, add to their applications like uh, cartridges, right? As you want to have a database, you want to have Mongo or Redis or whatever. So, so we, we come with this cartridges format. So the, the code base within a one year goes from 19,000 lines of code to 116,000 lines of code. That's not that much step, right? So, but it was still written in Ruby and basically OpenShift V2 is what you currently have in online, uh, on OpenShift online. So if you go to openshift.redhead.com or openshift.com, you, you, you will get uh, this, uh, right? So gears, you know, our cartridges, you know, the, that, that what we call, what we are calling OpenShift V2. So then, uh, you know, uh, this Docker hype started, right? So everyone was crazy about Docker containers and containers and Docker and Docker images, you know, and sharing and, you know, uh, unicorns everywhere, you know, and, and people really see as a, people really see Docker as the way to go, with the way of the future, how the container should be done. The, for me, the, the most interesting aspect of Docker is that they add this ability to share images, right? Mm -hmm. So it was not just you have the container running on your system and you are fine, it works for you, but you can also take that container and the, its content and share it with somebody else, right? Which also, which allows a beautiful things, like you, you now, you are not tied to the source code, but you, you share the entire environment where your application runs, which, which was a huge step. 
So, and while in V2 we are still uh, using our containerization technology, we see this as uh, something that people will really want to do, like a sharing, you know, that social media and stuff. That's that's currently what people do. So, so we can't ignore it. So we have two options. We either go with our containerization technology and build this images concept ourselves, and then we lock in ourselves into this, all right? Or we, we will just use what other people want, which is Docker images, because Docker and, you know, this wheel and logo, Docker cons, t-shirts and stuff, you know, that, that people, what people ask. So, so we, we start thinking about having the Docker supporting OpenShift. And that's how the OpenShift V3 started. So before we started OpenShift V3, it happened in the same year, we, we spent like half year in R&Ds and we created a project called GearD, Leaf GearD. That was the place that we started to write Go. So, so you, can, you can think of OpenShift engineering, it was all Ruby, all around the place, Ruby programmers, even the administrator operations was Ruby. You know, everyone was written Ruby because everything was written in Ruby, you know? And now, you know, somebody come and say like, okay guys, like we are going to use Go. Why, right? Well, because Kubernetes is written in Go and Kubernetes is what we want to use for our, as, to run containers in cluster. And also Docker is written in Go. So why we should continue re writing our software in Python or Ruby or something else? Can we, ha we can have a native interface to Docker and Kubernetes, right? So, so then, you know, half year, it, oh, well, it was maybe faster, but we all switched from Ruby to Go. And we, you know, started writing a Go code. Which was interesting because the, the, when we released OpenShift V3 last year, uh, so in one year, we managed to write 200,000 uh, 200, lines of code in Go, you know, which was basically we rewrote the whole OpenShift from scratch, completely from scratch. Which means like we, we already have Kubernetes, but what Kubernetes doesn't provide for you is built. So and we really care about the user experience and the you know for us the user experience is that the user have a source code and they want to run it in platform as a service. So users don't want to run containers. U users want to run their application services and the so and build them from the source code they have. You know how many of you are building Docker images, right? Okay, one, Fair two, enough. three, four, five, six, seven. I don't count you because, you know. <laughs> You're doing. So, you know, seven, right? Seven people actually use Docker and build Docker images. So, how many of you write code? Yeah? Everybody, right? So, that's what people want, right? People want code. People don't want Docker images. But the Docker images are nice because you can place the code inside Docker images and share it with somebody else. So, that's why we, uh, we go. So now we are here present. Uh, so we are currently on the OpenShift Origin 3.1.1, which has 300,000 uh, 300, lines of code. So you know it's the, the 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 movement, like the, the the you know the effort that we spend as engineers to write OpenShift and you know put more features in it. You can you can see that from the lines of code actually. You know it's growing rapidly. You know we, we do a lot of new stuff. We had controls that Kubernetes doesn't have. We we do a lot of uh, you know, plugins for Kubernetes and so on. I don't even count the contribution to Kubernetes itself. And Docker. And, and to Docker, right? We have people doing, contributing to Docker. Currently on GitHub, we have something like around 100 active contributors, so people that actually write the code and sending us pull requests. We, we managed to have something around 9,000 commits for, for Origin since it starts. So I think that's pretty good numbers. It's, it's even higher than that. It, yeah, I don't. If you come to the, the 520 talk, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so who we are? So, basically, we are a team of engineers. We are globally distributed. Uh, we, I think we use all time zones. <laughs> I mean, like, we have people working in the US. We have the QA guys and testers in China. We have people working in South America, in Europe, everywhere, right? So, so that's, you know, it's beautiful how these things work together. So we, we, I'm part of the developer experience team here. So OpenShift is the office engineering is divided into these four major teams. Of course, we have many more teams. So we have teams for networking, we have team for integration storage. services, storage, and I don't know what. But these are the main, the core engineering teams in OpenShift. So I'm part of the developer experience team, which primary responsibility is to build a developer experience around OpenShift. So how developers are going to interact with OpenShift, right? It's Docker images build, how to convert your source code to a running application, tools, CLI, you know, everything that makes your life as developers better. Then we have user interface team, which Jakub is in, which, you know, they're, they're, they're JavaScript developers. 
And then we have. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, 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 they do a great job in making the console, so the, the website that, that you can control. <laughs> you know, the OpenShift weight. Uh, you can you can see the containers and everything in the web browser. That's their job, and they do a great job in, in doing that. So with that, we have also the integration services team because the OpenShift currently can be integrated with many other third-party tools like uh, Eclipse, for example, right? You can, you can have, you have an Eclipse plugin that you can just create a new project and deploy it in OpenShift and continue to develop that project and redeploy it in OpenShift. We also have a platform management team. So that's a, that's a bit like a very low-level team for us because those are the poor people who are doing the rebases to Kubernetes. They are basically getting the code from Kubernetes and rebase OpenShift on top of this, so it's a very poor job. They're also doing a lot of commits to Kubernetes yes. itself, so it's kind of guys that are working on the core of OpenShift, a really core core of OpenShift, so low-level stuff. So, so these are all the pictures I took from the GitHub page. So these are all the contributors that are actually actively working on OpenShift right now. And, uh, you know, so we all working together, we have meetings, we, lot, we do a lot of R&Ds, we do a lot of uh, design sessions, and it's a very challenging environment. Sometimes we even argue about things, you know, we get pissed and mad about you know, other guys. Some bike so, shedding sometimes. Yeah, and, and it's very important that uh, OpenShift itself is not driven by somebody from management, right? Like, there will be like a big boss saying like, you do this, right, and you do it this way. So OpenShift is more like a, developer based so we create the features in Trello I will show that later and then we go implement these features right so because we as a developers we know what is the best for other developers right managers don't know what is good for developers right sorry pay Listen. paycheck <laughs> yeah so <laughs> food and paycheck food. <laughs> yeah so so these are all the cultures right? But we also have some very smart guys uh, that's actually supervising all of those people that are of great minds about what the future of all these things should be and how these things should work each other and where we will be in one or two years. So we have very smart people on the team. Like this is Clayton. Uh, he's a chief architect for OpenShift engineering. So all, so he's basically having this great picture about everything, right? Like. The, all the microservices, all the different architectures, CI, CD flows. Like he, he is basically the guy who is saying yes or no on the things that, that, that we basically do. He's a great guy. And this is how the bigger picture looks. Yeah. And it's funny because on the GitHub, he, his nickname is Smarter Clayton because he's smarter than us. So, you know. And already know. someone already took his nickname, so he yeah. just prepared it with Smarter. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that, that, that was about that. So now, what, we, what tools we are using right, on our daily basis? So I, I already mentioned, we have Trello. Trello. Trello is a very easy going website where you can have different boards and cards and you can basically manage your project in agile way. So this is how developer experience Trello board looks like. Every team has its own Trello board, right? But this is like how our developers look like. So this is a new board. Every new idea we have, everything that we get from you as a community, you know, end up here. So, so basically we keep adding uh, cards, you know, for features, you know, that we thought like, will be good for developers. You know, like template enables specifying a volume or creating a secret in template, you know, everything goes here. Then every sprint we basically discuss what here should go here, right? Like what, what is, what is, is, is it sane to do this or, you know, we do a lot of discussion about every, every card and we discuss about like, are we want to do it or are there any better ways to do it, you know, or we want to really do this card. That it goes to backlog, you know, and, you know, it sits in the backlog for a while <laughs> and, 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 you know, one per time it goes to next, which is like what we are going to do next sprint. For us, the sprint is three weeks. Uh, where one and a half week is dedicated for development, so we do development. We really do the code, reviews, and all this kind of stuff. And we can do development in the other half, but we need to, do, we need to give the QA guy something that they can test, right? So that's, that's how we basically work. And then the in progress is basically what we do this sprint, right? Like, so this is what we are doing this sprint. So we have internal Git server ongoing for online, you know, secrets and builds, um, issues and stuff. And this is complete and so. So we use a Trello because it's very simple for us. Our Trello boards are public, so anyone can just come and make a comment, add new card, you know, and vote. see what are we going to do, basically. Or vote on the features and so on. Okay. So that's Trello. 
and that's the link for the Trello. So, so you can have you can see all the boards there. Uh, so the next tool we use is this. Uh, it's hated and loved. Uh, people hate it because of the comments and you know disappearing, a force push and blah blah. So there are people who hate it. There are people who love it because it's actually allowing you to have this social aspect of coding, right? So you write comments and you can you, you can write a pull request and you can contribute, you can fork the repositories whether it's good good or bad, right? But we use GitHub because Docker use GitHub. Kubernetes could use GitHub, and it, it makes the project more visible for people, right? Like you can just easily go to GitHub and see all the source code, you can see the comments, you can see the pull requests and what's going on. As I said, we do a lot of code reviews. So, I, I mean like, we, we really are very, sometimes it's, you know. Too picky. It's too picky, but, but we are really keen on having the source code that we do in a good shape. So, so we spend a lot of time reviewing other people's code, uh, trying to, you know, suggest like better names for variables, or uh, yeah, or or the re reorganize the code, or you know, the OpenShift, as I said, it has like th three hundred thousand lines of code. You spend one life to learn all of it, right? So, so what what we do with the reviews, like we have a guys who are the subject field expert for every every of this part of the code, so they can do suggestions for you. So if you are re implementing something that already exists in Kubernetes, they can just point you there and, you know, that's how we keep our code base sane, basically. Uh, what is important is that we have a pretty strong integration with uh, Jenkins. So we run our internal Jenkins. I can show you how that looks like. And it's connected to GitHub and it's connected to Trello and other things. So this is our Jenkins, yeah, resolution scrap. And because it's Friday, there is nothing going on here. <laughs> it's actually a good, like, we can track, like, how many people work through the number of jobs running. So we have, we, we, we basically built everything through Jenkins. Jenkins is also commenting under pull request. You can instruct the Jenkins to build and test your pull request if you want. You can also, you can also specify what tests should run in Jenkins, what, you, what your feature is adding. So we have a kind of extended test concept where you can say, okay, I'm changing something related to builds, so I can execute all extended tests that touches builds, and that runs for two hours. Right? And it will tell you if you break something or not. We also don't merge on GitHub, so we, we, we never hit the merge button on GitHub. Jenkins is doing that for us. So Jenkins has a merge queue, so all, all, the, all the pull requests are properly organized. So there is no mess in these. We also built all the images that we can publish uh, on uh, Docker Hub here in Jenkins, and then we're just pushing them to Docker Hub. We are not using the Docker Hub integrated build service because it sucks. And, and we can have a more control of what we are building, so we can also execute the test against the images. We can see if the images are actually working, or we, if we broke them, or something is wrong in them. So instead of just blindly publishing every commit on Docker Hub, we can we know like what what we are going to push. And yeah, so that's. That's testing, and you can see like this is how it looks like on GitHub. So every time I tag the pull request test, J Jenkins will report the URL. You can go check like what's going on in Jenkins. Uh, we also use a Travis. So Travis builds. It's like a smoke test, a Laguna test. Like things compiled. Okay, perfect. Now run it in Jenkins. And what's important, like there is one guy who is actually father of this Jenkins infrastructure. It's a very complex infrastructure we are, because we are connected to Amazon AWS. So we don't have any slaves, as you notice in the, in the Jenkins screen. Every time we run something, we actually spawn an instance in Amazon and we run it there and then we shut down the instance because it's more effective. And of course, like it requires a lot of plugin works and, and we have a special plugin for Jenkins to actually manage all of these. And you know, and this guy with a red, red hat on it, like he's basically an architect for OpenShift who, who do all the CI flows. He also supervises all the engineering teams and try to keep things sane, right? So, so he's participating in all the meetings. And uh, another great mind, you know. Uh, same with Clayton. But not me, the other guy. The other, not him. The other <laughs> guy. Yeah, so this is how the Jenkins looks like on uh, Thursday yeah. afternoon when the US gets up. So, you know. Testing, testing. Very busy. So, the last thing I want to mention here is uh, Vagrant. 
So with v, V3, with OpenStreet V3, we switched from the AVS-based development, let's say, to use Vagrant as something that we can share with community and the other people can have the same developer environment as we do. So we have a Vagrant file published in, uh, on the origin repository. So if you just clone the repository and do Vagrant up, you get the developer environment all set up with Go installed, with OpenStreet installed, in system, everything we set up for you. So, so you can just start coding. The, the, the source code is mounted, is mounted into the Vagrant. So every code change you make is in Vagrant, so you just do make, and it will give you an updated binary, restart OpenShift, and you know, it's very fast development, I guess, like we, you know, sometimes if it works, <laughs> sometimes it breaks, but, but, but usually it works. Yeah, so, yeah. so this is something we also, so we have a special Vagrant OpenShift plugin that is also responsible for compiling the source code, installing Docker images, rebuilding Docker images. We have a lot of commands there that you can use to make your development workflow uh, be better, which is why I love working in OpenShift team because we really care about our developer environment. I don't, I don't see a lot of other teams in Red Hat doing the same. So we spend a lot of time improving our developers' workflows, like what we do. If there is some pain point or something that we found as very frustrating because we need to wait hours to rebuild something or something like that, we usually go sit and improve that tool ju just to make our lives easier. Right. Yeah, and other tools, we use RC, uh, so we are on the free node, you can join the OpenShift dev, uh, you will find all the developers there. As I said, we are distributed in the different time zones. So, so we are distributed in different time zones, so you should always find somebody online there, except, no, no always, always, there's always somebody. And we also use blue jeans for video calls, I don't know why I put it there. And yeah, so that's it. Um, so that was the presentation. That was all I have about OpenShift engineering. I don't know if you have any questions about that. You can just shoot. Yep. So you said you don't have a merge problem on GitHub, but you have a merge queue on Jenkins? Yes. yes. And why is that? And then do you enforce rebasing um, to master before you do the merge? So yeah, so yeah. So so the Jenkins has we have a Jenkins bot that has is a user on, on on GitHub that is actually we have a merge queue in Jenkins. So every time you we you, we tag the pull request with the comment uh, merge, <coughs> and then J Jenkins will execute some smoke tests and then Jenkins will merge that pull request for you. If there are like a concurrent pull request like the, so you so we have like 10 different pull requests and all get merge tag Right, the Jenkins will make sure they will come in in order how, how they were tagged, right? So that that you know, and and in that case, like our Git history, yeah, we enforce rebase because that without rebasing or if you have a conflict or something like that, your merge will fail, of yeah. course, right? So that that's preventing us from the problem. Like you have three con or five concurrent merges and. The, the last two, two uh, conflicts each other, right? So we, the Jenkins will just refuse to merge it and will send you the rebase. message to rebase. So that's why we use merge queue. So rebasing is done manually? It's yes. done manually, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like you will see that you have conflict in, uh, on, your, on your pull request, you have to rebase and then force push, basically. Yeah. Test it. Uh, yeah. Test, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So th that is very important uh, because a lot of uh, I, I saw a lot of projects that are merging as crazy to master. Like they say, like you know, the master should always be broken. You know, like we don't care. We time to time we just we, if we think that things are stable, we just t take it as a stable or something, or create a stable branch, and that, that's it, right? We don't do that. We actually every pull request that gets merged. To the to, to master is properly tested. We never merge something that breaks things. Well, <laughs> in theory, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it, at least it compiles and it runs the unit test. So, yeah. But the goal is like to don't don't break the master. If you have a free, oh, you mean like uh, for v2. Dot red hat dot com? Uh, RH Cloud? Right? Yeah, RH Cloud is v2. v2 yeah. It's it's not yeah. this version. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
we, we are going to announce online sometime, plus minus. I can't, I can't tell you date, but it is coming this year. Okay. He was first. <laughs> Go on, <Yeah>. HQ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the OpenShift is super complex system, but uh, it is one static binary. <laughs> yeah. Right? In, in fact, so so what, what you do is like you just you just build a static binary and redeploy it, right? So what can break is it, OpenShift also depends on different Docker images, right? We also run Docker registry, we also run router, we also run you know the ports and stuff that can break. And yes, you you need to be you know you need to rebuild those images if you uh, if you if you are changing the builders, for example, or because that. But you, you know, we, we don't do, I don't think like we do a lot of testing like uh, locally. We, we, we just write the code and recompile it, uh, start it, make sure everything works. Mm -hmm. And then we send a pull request and tag it for the extended test and make Jenkins do the dirty hard, job. The, the dirty <laughs> job of testing that thing, right? If something breaks, Jenkins tell me like what's wrong and I don't need to sit two hours and watch all the extended tests running. So that, that's what we do basically. Yeah, in, in the whole binary, everything is bundled like console, like web console, OpenShift itself, Kubernetes, ATC did not anymore. I think it is. It is? Yeah, okay. But you can replace it with standalone. Do so you have a question? Uh, when you moved from version 2 to 3, you did a lot of things because Kubernetes did it and stuff like that. Why, uh, why was that choice made? Or was it a big decision to have to go and say, we're going to drop everything we have and have code structure? Yeah. So, so with V2, like, so, so what? It's my personal opinion. And in, in V2, we had a uh, very good developer experience. We have very good, like, uh, from nothing to have your application running, right? But it was in the other case, it was limiting, right? Because if you want to do something complex, or you want to have like a multiple cartridges or multiple gears that connect each other and work, right? That that, that was. But it doesn't work that well, right? Because you need to write these crazy YAML files with the cartridges that nobody really likes and uh, understand the concept of subscribing and having like a scaling out and so on. So we thought like when we start working on the V3, we took that and, and we tried to build like very complex system that allows you to do these complex things. So we thought like the, f the future will be microservices, right? The people will try to run like a different API servers you probably want to run the different REST API, you have a Vornish, you have a Redis, you have a caching layer, you have a database backend, you have, you know, a lot of small components, a lot of small services that, that, that are talking to each other. So for me, V2 and V3 are two different concepts, right? In the end, like we might end up in V3 to provide this simple to use user experience. We are getting there slowly, but we need to make first sure that all these complex scenarios that we want to satisfy are working. Right? That's why it looks very complex right now. But give it one year and it, we will have an RHC create. create. So, <laughs> yeah. so and, and I don't think it's that complex, right? Like you have this nice UI. It's actually never finished because the Wi-Fi really sucks here. So it, I'm, I'm building the Docker image and you know it's pulling, it's pulling the image. And, but this is how the OpenShift UI looks like. It's, I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> it's great. It's great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, and it even allows you to this, I, I call it manager's view. So it, it, it visualizes how the different uh, services talking each other, how different components are related to each other. If, for example, you scale this up, you know, you see this is real time, so it will show you what is going on inside your project and stuff. Because we really want to tell people the story that, that they should go this microservices way, because that's what Docker uh, encourage people to do. With Docker, you can do this microservices thing. Without Docker, it will be much harder to do this. Right. And with our previous containerization technology, technology it will be even more harder. I see the real shift is happening on that. Three years ago, we were all told that we depend on the source code, right? So you have a commit, or you have a this is the commit I'm going to deploy the production. And then you deploy it to production, right? In this world, it's like, yes, this is the commit, the source code. I build the Docker image and I promote the, 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 build, the, the Docker image to production. So you're promoting the entire environment, right? So <laughs> that allows you to do this microservices thing. Yeah? Uh, 
in case I'm an external contrib contributor to OpenShift, I create a magic test and I suppose uh, the internal Jenkins builds it and tests it. It's public actually, That's you, you can go there. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, but my understanding is that uh, if I uh, create the uh, magic request, uh, there is uh, Jenkins uh, sitting in the Red Hat. What do you mean with merge request? Pull request. Pull, pull request, uh, pull request. Or? Pull request. Yeah. 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 So yeah. somebody has to tag it with the test, it and then the run Jenkins runs. It yeah. doesn't run automatically. Yeah. I mean, like, somebody needs to add a test tag. From to, our organization. To From organization. So you add tag uh, that uh, it, it should be, be tested. Run, and yeah. then Jenkins runs it, and then uh, it takes some tests, uh, does the external development. Yeah, yeah, you have you have you have access to the logs from the Jenkins. It's public. Yeah, okay. you can just go to that URL. You, there's yeah, a URL. So yeah. okay. There is nothing private here. Like you, yeah. it's all public. Uh, I suppose uh, the Jenkins view that you showed it's it was, it was uh, No, public. it's not. Public. It just has weird ad address. <laughs> ci.openshift.redhead.com. It's not. So this is public. This is public. Yes. You can okay. just go there. Yeah. Um, what version of Oahu compiler are you using for testing? Okay, can you repeat that? What version of Oahu compiler are you using? It depends. You want the fast or you want the slow? And and why? And so, so if I do development, I usually go for one, uh, go 1.4 because it's much faster. Compilation time <coughs> is much faster. Uh, if you want to, if we, when we built this thing in, in Jenkins, we go for 1.5, I guess, mm -hmm. because that's what the stable, well, stable, that's what optimized thing is. But, you know, the problem is that the Go 1.4 is much faster compilation time comparing to 1.5. But between them, there is no backward incompatibility or something like that. They're compatible. So it doesn't matter, really. So you are not testing against the master branch? No. What? We are we are only for, to do for uh, we are testing against detect versions. I mean, like we have a Travis that uh, that is test against all the Go versions, yes. of course. But inside the Jenkins, we we just use the whatever version we have in RHEL, yes. So, or in CentOS or Fedora. Or we don't have a multiple Go versions there, but because you you don't need to test that because the Travis will do that job for you. I mean, at, at Travis is free, we don't need to pay for it. So. Yeah? Any other questions? Yeah, is there a use case for replicating uh, database in OpenShift? <laughs> really good question. <laughs> well, do we have a marketing people here? I saw some use case. Just <laughs> you close your eyes. Yes. Yeah, so so my opinion on this is that we have this kettle versus pet yeah, analogy, yeah. right? So we treat containers as kettle. So so if something is wrong with container, we just shoot it and start another one. Stateless, right? So I don't think that analogy applies to databases actually, because databases is where I have the money, right? Like I don't want to treat databases as kettle. It's my pet. If it gets sick, I will go and investigate what's wrong with database, why the index is corrupted, why my data are lost, why my table is corrupted, right? So there will be some like quote for pets. No, <laughs> there is no such thing. So so if I will go to production. I won't run database in OpenShift. I will probably dedicate one node as uh, I will run, and I will treat it as a pet there, you know, make my data safe. And then I will, in OpenShift, I will create a service that points to that IP address and use it for my deployment. So I don't, I don't use a data, uh, database, I don't have a database container. I run database as a first class citizen in my infrastructure, and I just expose it as a IP address for the service. Persistent storage is very tricky. Like, you know, you can you can get it good, but you never get it right. So, uh, we are trying to get it good now, but you know, still, there's a lot of problems with that. Okay. okay. And before we end, I just want to ask Tomas, can you come up here?
this is our one of the winners from, of the Winter of Com competition, and we have something for him. Come on. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So we have some price, and then you will have to still buy and get t-shirt. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, any other questions? How much time? Zero. Zero. Okay. So thank you. If you were, if you are shy to ask questions, just come. Please. Kámo, tebe zastaví to, jak zastaviť maš, uh, lokomotívu. Musíš kopnúť. Like uh, a Ako teoreticky by mohlo byť riešenie, že mám veľmi dobrý story, že mám host mal, že mám na hostovi proste víc a mám dedikované mody, kde bežím na databázi a kde tam môžem potom už na databázi bežiť a môžem škálovať a so mňa. Je to kvôli tomu vlastne, že default ten opresný týštor to je dobrý rozkýv volný. On sa hodí normálne, on sa dá normálne požiť v produkcii, ale vy vlastne tým hoziom, že musíte mať ako keby nód selektor na tej pôdy, kde beže na tej vlastne nastavenie a musí bežal na tej istej nód. Yeah, a lot of Yeah, No. Okay. I don't know who's done this. Who's done this? The guy who just that's also something that's uh, awesome. <laughs> 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 you have it now? Yeah. Okay, I will just uh, put the winners of Winter of Code t-shirts and I will stop by. Okay. <laughs>
Sorry. Yes. That's something that also the, 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 the boss could do. The boss could do before it's... Uh, yeah. Replace it could uh, replace it. Yeah, sure. Thanks. 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 You don't have the clicker. Oh, this is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, does it go too far from... Yeah. Well, normally I, I, I shout a lot. So, yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, if there will be some questions, please repeat that for the... Oh, this is recording too? Uh, yeah, okay. It's probably streaming right now. Oh. Maybe somewhere on YouTube nice. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> So if you want to say anything incorrect, you can probably know it won't be censored. <laughs> Very good. Do you have everything? I do have everything. Keep my own time. Yeah, we will show you uh, okay. 10 minutes and 5 minutes uh, ahead of, uh, and okay. then the out of time, and then we will run and shout. Cool. <laughs> No, I can introduce myself. If you, okay. if, if you don't want, if you want, if you want, uh, I could uh, say who is Volkan and. Okay, uh, sure. Okay. And uh, who pronunciation Mike, Mike Barrett? Yeah, Mike Barrett. They forgot the last T. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot. Yeah, they were saving money, you know, they could only get one T. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could find a black pencil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
that his presentation uh, open shift is not the issue. All right, thank you. Come on. So I have you for the next six hours. No, just kidding. I have 40 minutes to get us in and out of this material. So we're going to move kind of quickly. Hopefully you've experienced or you at least know a little bit about OpenShift if I'm just going to be talking about the future. But I will give you some background in case you happen to be completely new. Um, let's dig into it. It is a futures presentation. So I have to display this and say these are not promises. 